Good morning and welcome to the next session. Uh, in this session, we will discuss meaning, scope and origin and development of anthropology. I hope you have enjoyed all the other sessions and uh, this session will be meaningful in this you will know about the meaning of anthropology and what it covers under its umbrella and when it started right and how the discipline this subject have evolved over the years that is our purpose of study. So what we are going to cover let me tell you in brief we will study meaning in today's session and that meaning we will try to understand through various definitions given by scholars and through these definitions we will come at the most meaningful definition that you can use in your exam right so which is the most meaningful which is the most comprehensive definition that we will talk here right so we will see the meaning second thing that we study is the scope of anthropology as a discipline of study academic discipline as well as as a profession the third thing that we are going to study is origin and development of anthropology right when it started how it evolved developed then we will come to some unique features of anthropology what is unique about anthropology we will discuss that whether anthropology is a science natural science or it is a social science and finally we will look at some of the comments of some scholars like R. R. Merritt he says that anthropology is the child of Darwinism Levi Strauss Kathleen Gogg all these comments we will try to understand how far they are true and how we can we can address the question if suppose there is a question that says that anthropology is a child of Darwinism. So how will we address that question that we are going to discuss in today's lecture in today's session. So I hope uh, that you have understood the scope of today's session. Now let us begin with the first thing that is what is the meaning of anthropology? What is the meaning of anthropology? So let us start with this topic. So the meaning you can understand from the very basics right from this word itself anthropology. Anthropology is a term which is derived from two Greek words that is anthropos and logos. Anthropos means human and logos means science, study or you can say systematic study. You can also say scientific study. So you can say from these words that it is the systematic study of human beings. But this definition does not reveal everything about anthropology. So you may be curious what of humans, where of humans, kahan ki padai karta hai and what all it studies it is not explained in this simple definition right. So what anthropology is what is its meaning let us look at that meaning from the opinion from the views of various anthropologists right. So let us start with the first definition of anthropology 
right i will give you few definitions and from those definitions you can make out which is the best definition those definitions somehow will tell you about the scope of this discipline also right so the very first definition i have discussed in the earlier classes also that is given by aristotle right aristotle aristotle is the father of anthropology also he was a greek scholar and he defined anthropology as the gossip which revolves around men and anthropologist is a gossiper right aristotle defined anthropology as a gossip it's a gossip which revolves around men and anthropologist is a gossiper who talks about himself this is the very first definition of anthropology given by aristotle who was a greek scholar now this definition also does not you know completely uncovers all details all facets that is covered by anthropology right after aristotle there were many attempts right like immanuel kant immanuel kant he described anthropology he defined anthropology in his book anthropology right the name of the book was anthropology as the study which describes and explains the animal origins social and cultural development and progress of human kind so basically immanuel kant is talking about the animal origins his definition discuss about animal origins that means biological aspect of humans right and he is also talking about social and cultural development social and cultural development as well as progress right in his work anthropology he talks about animal origin that means anthropology studies the biological aspect of the mankind according to immanuel kant it studies social and cultural development right as well as progress of human kind whatever progress we do over the years that is covered in anthropology so social aspect may be your social institutions like family etc family marriage economic organization and all and cultural aspect you can cover your norms traditions folk ways mores all these things yeah right then uh, it also talks about the progress so basically this definition gives a little more detail it tells us about at least two things social and biological aspect that anthropology studies social aspect as well as biological aspect that human is a biological being it's a, a member of animal kingdom and at the same time human live in society right it's a member of society also so anthropology studies both of these aspects and he adds into this another aspect that is progress of human kind that how we progressed from one culture <coughs> cultural living to the next level right that is the definition given by immanuel kant let us deepen a little bit more because this also does not cover everything right he gave this definition in uh, 1798 in his book anthropology <coughs> right it is quite elaborated view but still we want to expand it further we want to understand it in more detail <coughs> so let's move into the <coughs> sorry next definition that is given by encyclopedia britannica encyclopedia britannica in 1822 it defines anthropology 
as a discipline which is devoted to the discourse on human nature right and encyclopedia britannica defined anthropology as a discipline devoted on the discourse of human nature now this human nat nature include discourse on human nature now to encyclopedia britannica this human nature include biological nature the nature of an animal right that we have all the animal <coughs> needs and we have animal instincts then cultural nature and social nature so this definition of encyclopedia is also similar to what is described by immanuel kant right he is also talking about biological nature and socio cultural nature right if you want to elaborate on biological nature then you can say it is the study of human biology that we humans are the members of animal kingdom right then cultural nature it is the study of your art morals laws belief systems etc social nature your institutions right political life your family and all these things so basically it says that it is a study of biology and society and culture okay let's move a little bit uh, more deeper into it that what others say about the meaning of anthropology that what anthropology is because if you know the perspective of different different scholars right about anthropology you can make more sense of out it and when you study anthropology you must know that what these people have to say about it right although you did need not to write everything that we are discussing here in the examination but if you do not understand that then you cannot understand its meaning completely and unless you understand the meaning of any discipline it is very difficult for you to you know go deeper into it so the next definition that we have is the definition given by eb tyler eb tyler is a very famous british anthropologist right he was the first anthropologist who gave the theory of classical evolutionism it is the first theory in anthropology so what eb tyler has to say eb tyler in his book the name of the book is anthropology in his book anthropology which he have written in 1881 he says that he defined it as the study of old remains of people and physical features such as races languages customs and practices of primitive people right it is the study of old remains of people old remains of people and the study of physical features such as races then languages customs practices right so physical features like races languages customs right and all these things customs practices and all these things of what kin logon ka so basically according to tyler anthropology limits itself to the study of primitive people what tyler says it is the study of all these aspects of primitive people right of the simple societies of the tribal societies 
which are not civilized right civilized that does not mean that they are uncultured they don't have any sense no basically civilization is the more developed form of culture that we live in in which we have these technological advancements although that this tension is no more valid but for our understanding we are discussing that right so eb tyler restricted anthropology to the study of all these aspects all remains of people right the races languages customs practices of primitive people of the simple societies or the tribal people now this definition of tyler it basically limited the scope of anthropology right it says that it is limited to the primitive people it is not valid on the advanced societies right so that is what you can make out that what was said by immanuel kant or britannica and what is the view of eb tyler okay then after him you can take one or two more definitions so that you can make better sense out of it right so the first definition that i want to uh, tell you after that in the modern definitions is the definition given by the scholars like frank boas redcliffe brown and malinowski see these three names that i have just said frank boas malinowski Branislav Malinowski and Radcliffe Brown these are big names in anthropology and when you come into this discipline you have to quote these names again and again in various areas of anthropology right so what these three people have to say let me write their naam names first frank boas Malinowski Branislav Malinowski and RC Brown Radcliffe Brown These are the three important scholars and what they have to say These three make a similar sense they have similar opinion about anthropology right so what they say they defined anthropology as the study of men at all levels of development study of men at all levels of development so unlike eb tyler who restricted it to the primitive people they say it is at the all levels of development right that means they have expanded the scope of anthropology to all levels they are not restricting it to the primitive people only right so that is a very big landmark that expanded the horizons of anthropology that anthropology is not just limited to the primitive people now rather it includes all levels of <coughs> development okay then after him you can take two three more definitions right because they say that it is the study of men at all levels of development now i want to give you a feminist perspective because they are saying the study of men why men why not women right this question must be a very valid question in your mind do anthropology does not uh, study women are we restricting ourselves to men only so this is a very big question for you right so that is here that we can say that feminist anthropologists they say that it is the science of human kind so what feminist anthropologists say it is the science of human kind that is a you know this definition by feminist anthropologists 
have expanded its scope further right and it is giving us better meaning of anthropology so that is also good now a very famous anthropologist american anthropologist harkowitz he defined anthropology in his book men and his works Harkowitz defined anthropology in his book Men and His Works What he say He says that anthropology is the study of men and his works Anthropology is the study of men and his works now this definition also it is it's very interesting and it is very simple also for you to remember you can quote this definition in your answer when you are going to write what anthropology is you can quote this definition very easily you can remember this definition easily and this definition covers everything right so what it covers let me explain it right it is no different from what others has to say encyclopedia has to say or immanuel kant has to say but it is covering uh, you know detail in limited words so it is easy for you to remember right so man is the biological being man here is the biological being or the animal right so it is the study of biology according to arkowitz and his works his works include what his works include everything that you see in and around us the culture that you see the society in which we live various kind of social institutions like family marriage all these are products or it is the work of humans because they are not found in other animals because you may find that there are some societies in ants also bees also right but they don't have culture so it is a study of his works everything that you see in and around you is the work of humans right basically nature is one thing that you have in and around you right and then you have culture right so this culture i consider this culture and you can just think from the perspective that i am giving you right now that culture is humanized nature culture is humanized nature so it is that part of culture that part of nature this is culture which is humanized that means human activities we humans have manipulated the nature right we exploited it we used it for our benefit so that is culture right so you can say his works include that cultural developments all the facets of it right whether you see the social institutions whether you see the technological advancements or anything that you can can cover so this definition is very meaningful and very short and crisp you can quote it right in your answer there is another definition given by clyde cluckon there is another definition given by clyde cluckon another american anthropologist in his book mirror for men in his book mirror for men what he says that anthropology is a mirror for men anthropology is a mirror for men and it gives the opportunity to look at himself it gives opportunity to look at himself in infinite variety of ways that means everything which is related to humans 
can be seen through the eyes of anthropology you're getting that so that includes everything so it is a mirror through which we humans can see at ourselves in infinite variety of ways right he further says that anthropology deals with infinite curiosity about men anthropology deals with infinite curiosity about men it deals with infinite curiosity about men then after that let me tell you <coughs> that these definitions you know let's summarize what they tries to say and then i will bring you to another definition this definition says that anthropology study is the biological aspect it studies the social aspect right it studies the cultural aspect when you try to take into consideration uh, the definitions of clyde cluckon it is the mirror for men that means it includes everything right so it says that all aspects of men and these all aspects can be your language can be your past can be your present can be your future and it includes all variations and diversity also right so it includes all diversity right when you talk about the definition given by harkowitz he says that his works so his works in past his works at present right his works in america his works in the tribal india his works in papua new guinea his works in hawaii right all these areas so over space isn't it so let us summarize these with the help of a definition given by marvin harris a very famous american anthropologist right and then i will give you a, another understanding of anthropology okay so another definition is given by marvin harris in his book the theories of culture in post modern times marvin harris in his book theories of culture in post modern times in post modern times he defined anthropology as the study of all aspects he says that it is the study of all aspects of all mankind entire mankind right at in all places and in all times in all places and at all times so i believe that dif this definition of marvin harris it is very wide in scope it covers everything that you have to present to the examiner you can quote this book that it is the study of all aspects of whole mankind entire mankind all humans in all places sab jagah pe whether it is india europe americas africa australia or anywhere and in at all times that means past present as well as in future right so this definition is basically a little more complete then the definitions you have studied just now right so let us uh, do a little more justice because if you want to score high in anthropology 
you have to present your opinions in a but much structured way you can write this definition this is wonderful definition right you want to define anthropology so you can write that anthropology the word anthropology is derived from two greek words that is anthropos and logos which means it is a systematic study of human beings right then a comprehensive definition is given by marvin harris in his book theories of culture in postmodern times in which he says that it is the study of all aspects of all mankind in all places and at all times this definition gives more meaning and let us show the same definition through a chart right so you just make a chart and in this chart you can write here space you can first write time and here you write space okay and in here you write biological aspect and here socio cultural aspect see although we know that there are four major specializations of anthropology and if you are to write then you should write here linguistic anthropology or linguistic aspect and archaeological aspect but we are combining them we are compiling them here in these two for our own convenience because we have to present to the examiner right so the presentation of four will be a little messy that's why we are limiting ourselves to these four right these two aspects now biological aspect over time we humans have evolved from the apes right right so it deals with the evolution human evolution it deals with human evolution now biological aspect over space just think the kind of people in andaman and nicobar islands the kind of people in china and northeast india the kind of people in africa the kind of people in india the kind of people in europe right the kind of people in south america so there is a huge diversity right there are different different kind of people that are found in different different areas space so we expect the distribution of biological features over space how people of one region differ from the other right so you find variations biological variations what i have discussed is the physical morphological that means you can see it from outside but that is not all rather there are variations in our blood groups in our genetic structure right so biological variations and these biological variations are you can say racial right or other genetic variations genetic or physiological variations you can write here right then in socio cultural aspect you know that with time hamare paas shuruaat se to artificial intelligence nahi thi right earlier we may be using telepathy we do not know we may be using that uh, uh, jo shri ram use karte the that uh, to their their uh, rath was flying a little higher right so all these things we do not know whether we have the technology 
but right now we have very advanced technology with the advancement in culture so the early cultures were not that advanced right so what we are dealing here evolution of society and culture right our norms evolve our social institutions evolve right pehle ke social institutions polygamy was maybe a uh, very prevalent phenomena <clears throat> but now monogamy is more acceptable and more prevalent right then you can talk about technology also here so all these aspects socio cultural aspects are covered that how they evolved over time now these socio cultural aspects over space you know that there are some tribal societies which live in pre agricultural world right that means their level of technology is pre agricultural they are not even they have not adopted agriculture okay so that thing we have to discuss here right pre agricultural technology or you can say here that uh, uh, the distribution of different type of cultures right so variations in cultures variations in cultures there are tribal culture there are agricultural and there are urban cultures right there is difference in their technology there is world view their kind of social institutions because at one place you may find polytheism like hindu at the same time you will find monotheism in europe right ek god ki puja aur lakhs of gods ki worship you will find different different kind of marriage institution right at some places polygamy is allowed at some places monogamy is allowed right at some places you will find that there are joint families at some places you will find nuclear families right so all these things you will find in variations in culture so this is what you can say that this is the definition of anthropology this is the meaning of anthropology that i wanted to convey i believe i have done justice with that i have told you about almost every definition that is required for you in upsc all the important definitions and what you can make out of it right so if you have to write suppose if you have to write a very holistic definition of anthropology then you can write in a way if you want to further write after writing the definition given by marvin harris and writing this chart you can further elaborate it if you want to write then i will give you a definition that i have developed with my understanding of anthropology right which covers almost everything and with that coverage i will explain what anthropology is what its meaning is that i have understood from my learnings of anthropology right so anthropology is a right anthropology is a systematic holistic integrated comparative historical and universal study of mankind of all places and at all times right so what i want to to say of the meaning of anthropology is that anthropology is a systematic that is visible in that word logia second is it is holistic third it is integrated fourth it is comparative five it is historical and universal study of mankind let me explain on all these 
terms that I have enlisted for you. See, what systematic means that it is a scientific study, right? It is a scientific study. Anthropology talk with the facts, right? It is not, you know, generalizing theories on humans on just some intuitions, right? Or on some conjecture or imagination. No. Anthropology talk with the facts, right? With scientific facts. So it is a very scientific study. It based its study on observation. Right? And from time to time, various hypotheses and generalizations or theories have been tense tested. Right? They have been criticized, rejected, and that is how the science of anthropology is getting systematized day after the day. Right? So it is systematic study, which is based on facts, observations, right, and experimentation. And what is this laboratory? Because science, you practice in laboratory. So for anthropology, the laboratory is the society. The entire field is the society and the culture. Anthropologists consider the entire village or entire social setting as a laboratory for himself or herself. Right? So it is a systematic study of humankind. The second is holistic. This word holistic means it covers all aspects. All aspects. Just try to recall what uh, Clyde Cluckon have to say. Clyde Cluckon says that it is a mirror for men. That means it allows men to look at himself in infinite variety of ways. So whatever aspect is related to us, whether it is biological, whether it is socio-cultural, whether it is linguistic, whether it is past, present or futuristic, everything is covered. Whether it is social, political, economic, right, cultural, religious or whatever you can think of, everything is studied by anthropology. Right? You may see that this holism makes it overlapping with other disciplines also because it is the study of human behavior it is the study of human nature it is the study of its social aspect economic political and so on and so forth then next word is integrated integrated means it studies all the aspects right but it sees one aspect integrated with the other so it does not see that social aspect is isolated from the economic aspect. No, both are embedded, both are integrated and both these are embedded into the political aspect and this political aspect is rooted in the ecological aspect. You may see that religious aspect also somewhere. So that is how it says that anthropology is an integrated study because it sees all aspects embedded in the other. They are not separate and isolated. So that is the another way of looking at anthropology and its meaning. Next, I have penned down comparative study. And the word comparative study here says that anthropology compares one society, say this is society 1, this is society 2 and this is society 3. It compares the societies and on the basis of the comparisons of various societies, it try to give its generalizations or theories. Suppose in society 1 there is marriage, in society 2 there is marriage. And society 3, there is also marriage. 
so what we can say that marriage is a universal phenomena so through the comparative study anthropology can come at a conclusion and it can derive theories in this way in this comparative way because this is the way suppose in uh, society one you will find that they use hand x they also use hand x and they also use hand x they can say that hand x is found in all cultures right all societies that is how comparative study you will know a little more deeper when the time comes and when we move forward little bit ahead right the next is historical right basically anthropology studies the human history the origin of various social institutions the origin of even humans right historical perspective is mainly limited to the cultural and social aspects so basically origin of our societies our cultures is studied under this historical aspect okay and through this historical aspect we can know about the progress the cultural development although let me clarify here itself if some some of you have any doubt here in the word progress that if you consider that andamanis are less progressive than what or than the people who live in the cities so this is not a not a thing that we call progress because in some areas the andaman islanders have better understanding of their culture right they have more cultural knowledge then even the people live in delhi right so we cannot consider that progress with the materialistic developments no right so it tries to understand origin pro progress and cultural developments the last word it is universal that means it studies societies and cultures of all places right at all places that means anthropology studies the tribal culture it studies the urban industrial cultures right it studies the caste based societies it studies the tribe based societies and it studies the class based societies or rank based societies so its uh, study is universal in nature i believe through all this discussion you understand what anthropology is what is its meaning right the last definition that i gave you that discuss the meaning of anthropology so you can write the definition given by marvin harris you can make that chart and you can write these all right you can write the comprehensive meaning through these words and that will showcase to the examiner that you really understand the meaning of anthropology what anthropology means right what it covers even that you have explained into it so i believe till now everything is clear right now let us move on to the next topic that i have enlisted in the very beginning that we will discuss meaning then we will come to the scope of anthropology okay i'm rubbing it up so in scope we will discuss the scope under three major heads let me tell you what are those three major heads and through which you can basically understand the scope of anthropology these three headings will give you a better perspective right you can understand better what anthropology covers right what is covered under the umbrella of anthropology right what is covered under it so basically anthropology covers everything right we have already seen that anthropology covers each and everything that is related to us we humans right 
So, but still, when you have to write the scope of anthropology, you have to write in a systematic manner. Because you have seen that systematic study is a human being. Ki. And if it is the systematic study, then what it covers, you must write in a systematic way. So, the scope of anthropology can be seen through three major, major headings. Right? In the first heading that you can say is that the scope of anthropology as a discipline. Scope of anthropology as a discipline of study. Discipline of study. The second heading can be the scope of anthropology as a profession or you can say as practice. The third major heading can be that where, right? So the third heading we can put universal, right? What and where? So as a discipline of study, anthropology covers all those four major specializations that is biological, it studies the biological aspect, it studies the socio-cultural aspect, it studies the linguistic aspect and finally you can write it studies the archaeological aspect or you can say the study of extinct cultures because the extinct cultures also gives us an understanding about the past humans right how they behaved right all this thing can be studied under this now next thing is that it is universal it is universal in its scope that means this universalism you can take across time and space Right. So, here the discipline of study it is holistic as it covers all aspects. Right. As well as anthropology is not just limited to the study only, rather, it is a profession where it helps in finding solutions to various problems of humankind. Right? And this study is universal. Right? It studies humans over the space and over time. So, you can discuss the scope of anthropology under these three major heads. The first one is as the discipline of study, the second one is as the profession of study, and the third one is its universal nature. It expands its scope further. Right? Now, let me give you a little more detail about all these that how you can write upon it. But before going into it, let me elaborate upon it in, uh, in a little summarized way. So, anthropology is a holistic discipline which deals with all aspects of humankind over the time and space. This statement, this statement reflects its scope completely except this thing that it is the profession also, it is the practice also, right? It is not related, limited to just the study, rather it applies its knowledge for the benefit of mankind, although it covers that universal nature, indeed it covers. So this thing also you have to reflect in the scope, right? Because yesterday I told you that your answer should have SHR. This R is relevance and this profession, this practice make it, make it relevant for human beings because it helps in solving problems of us, right? So that is what I have to say, okay, <clears throat> then let me give you a statement by Amber and Amber, right? 
the book that you have to read if you want to know anthropology i must recommend that at least once you must study it's a very interesting book you must study and remember remember and many of the uh, you can say even international uh, journals even scholars caught amber and amber again and again for various reasons so amber and amber says that anthropologists have not always been as global and comprehensive in their concerns as they are today so all the this statement of amber and amber reflects a very important thing about the scope of anthropology what it says that today we see anthropology as a very comprehensive and global in its approach but it was not as as it is today in past so in past anthropology was having a limited scope right it is limiting itself to the study of primitive societies right in few aspects of culture or biology because the biology human genome right and on the basis of human genome we are classifying people also we are understanding them more deeply right we are using primatology now for understanding our human behavior we are studying primates like chimpanzee gorilla and all how they behave in wild how they behave when they are trained so how we can understand the process of our cognitive development we try to understand through the study of primates right the process of language development we try to understand from the study of primates all these things right so that is the expanded scope of biology cultural anthropology right similarly socio cultural anthropology right it was limited now it is very expanded nowadays we are studying the gender studies right through the power relations all these things we are trying to study through this socio cultural anthropology today in past we are limiting ourselves to the study of uh, maybe some institutions right some cultural features folk ways mores religion all these things but nowadays we are you know studying the diasporas the LB, lgbtqs right linguistic anthropology nowadays we are focusing on language and culture language and power relations language and authority right language and ideologies all these area we are studying so we have expanded the scope in archaeological anthropology earlier we were limiting to just collecting some material right we excavation and collection of some materials past artifacts antiquarian remains okay and with the help of that collection and identification our purpose was to classify that it belongs to neolithic period it belongs to mesolithic period or chalcolithic or any other period that was the purpose of archaeological anthropology earlier right but now archaeological anthropology have expanded its scope how now archaeological anthropology tries to interpret the human nature human behavior of the past so our purpose is not just limited to classification now what we try to do we try to interpret through the archaeological remains what they tells us about the human nature or human behavior of the past how we eat thousands of years ago what we eat right how we make our livelihood in the past what kind of social institutions were there in past using those stone tools or other artifacts that we collect that we excavate from different different sites right what kind of religious practices were there in past how we bury right or dispose the dead in past all these things we try to understand we try to interpret now so the scope have expanded so what amber and amber says he was true in that aspect that the scope was limited and now the scope is expanded so you can in incorporate both of these things the limited scope and the expanded scope of all these four branches right then it's a profession of study now see applied anthropology advocacy anthropology action anthropology development anthropology all these branches of anthropology 
they are a full fledged profession in which anthropologists are recruited by almost every organization whether it is agriculture development agricultural development department right even the space department big organizations basically recruit anthropologists to understand human behavior in their organizations to increase their efficiency even anthropologists are involved in studying this artificial intelligence right the wall street and all these stock markets are also studied the advertisement agencies they have anthropologists because anthropologists see human behavior in a much depth we understand human behavior in holistic and integrated manner that is why the advertisement agencies or you can say the space agencies industries agriculture department all these even the medicine department right medicine development understanding the human medicine systems so all these have the role of anthropology even cinema that you see the uh, the movie industry also take help of anthropologists because anthropologists see things much better clearly right that is why it is a profession it's a practice so here you find the practical role of anthropology right it is the relevance aspect next is it is universal yes it is universal because it is studying humans across time and space it studies tribal societies it studies the caste based societies it studies the class based societies it studies the urban industrialized societies it studies the elites it studies the poor right so it is universal in its scope so these three things i believe that through these three headings you can better elaborate upon the scope of anthropology i believe you have understood the scope of anthropology if you want i can give you some details about all these four that what it studies so here in biological aspect of mankind the evolution is studied right how we study evolution let me give you a brief about it so evolution is the study of basically how we evolved as humans right so paleoanthropology is a branch of anthropology in which we study fossils right that is one way of study then there are genetic analysis of those fossils that tells us much better that when that particular fossil was living right in which time period what kind of behavior that fossil had right that uh, species had then we study genetics in which we study the impact of genes on our growth and development then genes on uh, the uh, you know disease occurrence we study human races we study growth and development we study the anthropology of sports kind of anthropometry because you know see uh, that uh, some countries are using that kind of anthropometry in selecting their sports persons by looking at the genetic constitution as well as the morphological features we can select best best athletes right which who can be who can definitely bring the medals for the country or at least the probability is high right so physical anthropology can be used in that even the epidemiological studies nowadays you see that pandemic right the trends in disease spread you can study and if you can study the trends their occurrence naturally you can find solutions for that also right so that is also covered in this physical aspect or biological aspect of anthropology right here socio cultural anthropology it studies all socio cultural features at the same time it studies material and non material aspects of culture material culture that means you everything that is tangible that you can touch that human beings have formed right produced and non tangible you can say that our marriage you cannot touch marriage religion you cannot touch god right folklore myths rituals all these things then we study the political aspects law political institutions we study that uh, 
judicial mechanisms, all these aspects. And nowadays we have expanded to the study of gender relations, sexuality, right, LGBTQ and all, human rights, migration, diaspora, all these things are studied under this sociocultural anthropology. In linguistic anthropology, right, it studies basically the language origin, the variations in the language, the structure of language, right. So all these things are studied and at the same time what is the socio-cultural context of language. Because when we use, when we use a word, then you can understand that word because you are putting that word in that particular context, right. The language of one society may not be understandable by the other, the reason they cannot fit the same word in their social context, right. So that is the social context of the language. Then you know that language influences culture, okay. The structure of language influences culture. That is a very famous hypothesis given by Sapir and Worf, very famous linguist Edward Sapir and Lee Worf, his student, both these people gave a hypothesis which says that the structure of my language or your language or anybody else's language, it influences their cultural behavior, the way they behave in the culture, right. So that can be a very important thing for you to understand and the linguistic anthropology also studies the non-verbal communication because what I am communicating to you right now, my hand gestures, my facial uh, gestures and my body language, everything make an impact while communicating, right. So linguistic anthropology covers all that thing, right. And archaeological anthropology, I have just uh, told you all these things, right. Uh, uh, that the study of past cultures, extinct cultures through digging, dating and classifying and interpreting. Earlier the scope was limited until till the classification but now we are interpreting using those tools which we have recovered earlier. Our purpose is not limited just to the classification, right. So that is what we have to say here. Now next is this profession, in that profession you can write, you know, that profession here the application of all these four branches in finding solutions. So here there is application So applied anthropology in biological aspect nowadays production of medicines, right, bio vaccines that can be one. You can say uh, disease control, right, study of disease trends that is biological aspect, so by application of biology there biological anthropology, then you can find that how you can uh, solve the conflicts like regionalism, communalism or casteism, ethnic conflicts that can be studied under this sociocultural anthropology, right, the application of sociocultural anthropology or the practice of applied anthropology, applied sociocultural anthropology. Then you can say linguistic anthropology, the linguistic anthropology can be helpful in conservation of languages. You know that many languages are dying. UNESCO says that the language which is spoken by less than 10,000 people is on the verge of extinction. So how we can save those languages that comes under this and why do you want to save languages? What is the role of languages? See language is not just a language but rather it is a cultural repository. It, it, it is a repository of cultural knowledge because in that language, in those speakers, they have a variety of cultural knowledge and that knowledge, that human knowledge can be very useful in variety of areas. One example I give you, when 2004 tsunami came, the Andamani people, Andamani tribes were not much affected, rather the tourists were the majority of the people who died. Why the tribal people were not, not affected? Because they know about the ecological phenomena, the geological phenomena. They have anticipated it and they have climbed up to the higher areas, right? But 
the tourists were you know attracted by the fall in the sea level initially because during tsunami the sea level fall once and then a large huge wave come right so that thing that cultural knowledge not only in that aspect rather the cultures have a huge knowledge of society through their folklores through their oral traditions they have knowledge of nature medicines they have knowledge of agriculture nowadays when we are promoting this sustainable agriculture in in our fight against the climate change then our anthropologists and agriculturists they are learning the primitive agricultural practices because they were in harmony with nature they were not destructing the nature in the pace that we are destructing so that national initiative of climate resilient agriculture that basically is developed that is learning from the practices of the tribal of the tribal primitive societies that how do they practice agriculture and what we can learn from them so that is a importance here right so that is the importance that you can see here and in uh, this archaeological context i have discussed already right then time and space we have covered so this is all about the scope of anthropology and finally you can write one or two lines that anthropology is a evolving discipline it is not a static discipline it evolves on a daily basis right with more and more theories they come that the earlier hypotheses and theories are tested they are rejected they are improvised and new knowledge is created so it's a evolving discipline it's a very new discipline and with new and new technologies which are adopted by the anthropologists in our study of humans the better and more enriched this discipline is getting right this discipline is evolving and it is enriched on a daily basis right with faster adaptation uh, adoption of technologies and other means right and that we can see in various branches of anthropology like medical anthropology marine archaeology salvage salvaging archaeology right and all these things i believe that i have elaborated in quite a detail on the scope of anthropology right your questions can be taken care of later on when we'll have a webinar next is the development of anthropology origin and development of anthropology so let me tell you a very interesting thing about the origin of anthropology right that will be very interesting for you what is the origin and development of anthropology so what is the origin of anthropology when did the study of anthropology start right see if you want to talk about the origin then we humans are curious about ourselves we are curious about ourselves from the very beginning from the very first day of our own origin right we are curious that from where we came what is our purpose in life why we do the way we are doing okay so that is the thing that it is considered as a oldest discipline in one sense in that sense that we are curious about ourselves but it is as a discipline of study it is very young right so i will tell you about the origin and development of anthropology in the way that it is the unsystematic beginning of anthropology and the systematic and formal beginning of anthropology the way we are discussing that it is as old as the humanity itself right anthropology is as old as the humanity itself why because we are curious about ourselves from the very beginning from the very first day but we do not have any proof about it right so that way we call it unsystematic 
वी कैन नॉट साइंटिफिकली प्रूव इट कि हम पहले दिन से क्यूरियस थे या नहीं थे एंड देन द सिस्टमेटिक और फॉर्मल बिगनिंग ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजी लेटर ऑन आई विल टेल यू द वे ऑफ वन और टू मेजर स्कॉलर्स हु टॉक्स अबाउट द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजी एंड वन ऑफ दैम वॉज टी के पेनिमेन हु रोट अ बुक हंड्रेड ईयर्स ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजी इन नाइनटीन राइट सो आई विल टेल यू द वे ऑफ टी के पेनिमेन ऑल्सो that uh, about that book 100 years of anthropology but before that let us try to understand anthropology through these major heads the origin of anthropology as unsystematic beginning and the systematic beginning of anthropology okay so these two heads will be very very uh, important for you to understand the origin and development of anthropology right so the first thing that i wanted to talk to you let me uh, take the first one that is the unsystematic beginning so in unsystematic beginning you can start with this line that anthropology is as old as the humanity itself because we humans are curious about ourselves from the very first day that can be your very first thing to start with next after that you can start that greek scholars first of all started inquiring in the human nature greek scholars started inquiring into the human nature and the first greek scholar was herodotus herodotus was a greek scholar uh he was you know living from this 484 to 420 something in these years bc in 5th century bc herodotus wrote a book also the histories right he was a father of he is a father of uh, history also not anthropology okay and herodotus is considered as the first anthropologist herodotus traveled very widely across the greek colonies along the mediterranean coast and during his travels he is one of the most widest traveled uh, historian anthropologist he basically asked three major questions right those three questions are anthropologically relevant this is not what you have to write but you have to understand first right what you write you have to compress that that i will provide you in the notes also and i will dictate in the class also but today you have to understand here that herodotus asks three major questions and those questions are that can climate alter the physique or not right herodotus asks three questions that what can be the impact of climate on human physique the first question can climate alter our physique right then second question he ask the impact of diet on growth this is also again the anthropological question right and the third question is that is father or mother is the natural head of the family right so who is the head of the family he is dwelling into the social aspects at the same time he also was astonished by the different types of people and their bizarre socio cultural institutions he observed one social custom that is covard covard is such a custom in which husband imitate wife when she is pregnant he dresses like the wife use all the ornamentations that his wife wears right and even in the labor he experiences or basically he uh, you know shares the pain with his wife so this is such a interesting uh, social custom that was studied by him right so you can say that herodotus was the first person to inquire 
इन द ह्यूमन सोसाइटी एंड कल्चर और वो वॉज हैड डन एंथ्रोपोलॉजिकल ओरिएंटेड स्टडी इज द फर्स्ट वन आफ्टर हिम देर वॉज बेसिकली हिपोक्रेटस हु ऑल्सो टॉक्स अबाउट द मेंटल एंड फिजिकल ट्रेड्स राइट एंड हाउ दीज फिजिकल एंड मेंटल ट्रेड्स वर इम्पैक्टेड बाय द एनवायरमेंट एंड क्लाइमेट सो हिपोक्रेटस वॉज द अदर स्कॉलर हु ऑल्सो इंक्वायर्ड इन टू all these basically how physical and mental traits are affected by the environment and climate after them you know that uh, there is a very famous scholar aristotle who is also known as the father of anthropology he was also a greek scholar he wrote a book historia animalium right in which he basically talks about vast uh, description of fauna of the times right and he also talks about he also gave a definition of anthropology that it is a gossip which revolves around men and anthropologist is a gossiper so anthrop aristotle was the other one but here there was no systematic study of anthropology then after that we come directly to the times of renaissance and enlightenment period right renaissance and enlightenment period after that see before renaissance every explanation in the european world was basically through the church everything was seen through the eyes of god that whatever we have whatever we are is because of the god right but during renaissance and enlightenment the rationalism was put on the front foot right and that rationalism that reasoning basically led to some kind of you know uh, effort by the scholars to look into human nature and one of the important scholar of renaissance and enlightenment period was Immanuel Kant Immanuel Kant that you people study in your ethics also okay so i have already discussed about immanuel kant earlier so immanuel kant also discussed about animal origins social and cultural development and progress of human kind right so not only this that immanuel kant he uh, basically gave the definition in his book rather he was very instrumental in influencing very important anthropologist of the time that was lamarck right pritchard blumenbeck all these people were influenced by immanuel kant and his ideas right in a variety of ways and now in this renaissance and enlightenment period there was another big development that took place and what that development was that contributed to uh, the anthropological writings even today was the period of voyages right voyagers or explorers they traveled widely in different uncharted areas of the world after the age of enlighten in the age of enlightenment various explorers and voyagers like vasco de gama columbus balboa all these people they traveled very widely and explored the world the uncharted world and they documented all these things right and they told about those people their customs their practices their looks everything to their people right and that material was also uh, you know reached to the libraries and all their material remains and 
their description by these travelers was very important then with these voyages and explorers there was very important development that we all know the age of imperialism or colonialism right that these voyagers later on they started colonizing the world they started ruling the world ruling the areas so what happened with this colonization this colonization this colonialism lead to many problems also right this colonialism basically when these people started colonizing the other worlds the people were started resisting also they started revolting against the colonizers right and these colonizers these administrators the colonial administrators they started adapting in those new lands they started adopting new ways to rule them right they started documenting their ideas their their customs local people's customs and this colonialism was very instrumental in two three ways one that these colonial administrators collected data about the local people which reached to the libraries right then the second thing they faced rebellion and they have to act in order to sustain themselves on the different lands right so they adopted some practices to maintain to sustain their rule that was a very important development here during the colonial period there was a very important development very important development and uh, that was a study a book by darwin the book by darwin was on the origin of species right the name of the book was the origin of species on the origin of species by natural selection which he wrote in 1859 and from there that book was very instrumental his book the ideas of two three more people one was darwin who gave his ideas on the origin of species by the natural selection he was darwin himself was influenced by malthus a demographer of the time population geographer he was also influenced by wallace and during that time itself during that time there was another thinker that was herbert spencer british thinker all these thinkers and their ideas helped in systematizing anthropology their ideas helped in systematizing and during 18 late 19th century you can say late 19th century the first theory of anthropology that is classical evolutionism came right so with the help of ideas of these philosophers these thinkers these biologists and socio cultural anthropologists you can say not they were not in true sense anthropologists but their contribution was phenomenal in beginning the first anthropological theory that was classical evolutionism and any discipline it cannot be systematized unless we have a full fledged theory or this discipline was started teaching in the university level so that is where this classical evolutionism this school basically was developed by two three scholars one is eb tyler in his, in britain and alex morgan in america usa and there was another scholar two three scholars from germany right bastian and bachofen so at these three places this classical evolutionism school that evolved in late 19th century 
so that is where we start seeing the systematic beginning of anthropology right it completely consolidated as a discipline here because there was a full fledged theory that explains the human nature right so from the unsystematic beginning we started we, we started from herodotus hippocrates aristotle renaissance period immanuel kant and his followers who were influenced by him then the age of voyages and then colonialism and finally we basically move on to darwin and other scholars who helped in systematizing anthropology and the first theory came into being now from this theory let us discuss about the development of anthropology right from here you can say the discipline of anthropology was born systematically there was a formal discipline of anthropology now with this uh, discipline after your classical evolutionism classical evolutionism was the very first theory very first school in anthropology which says that all cultures throughout the world they evolve in a unilinear sequence from savagery to barbarism to civilization and this is because of psychic unity of the mankind we can find that we can see this evolution of cultures with the help of some cultural survivals that are found in all cultures kuch aisi cheeze hoti hain kuch aise cultural traits hote hain which survive during the course of evolution and what are those traits you can take some examples which were given by eb tyler he call uh, you know sneezing when you sneeze you says oh my god right so he says that this is a cultural survival because in early times humans think that with sneezing the soul the spirit can go out of the body right so we remember god so that the spirit stays back that was the explanation given by tyler so classical evolutionism was the first school of anthropology and then after that the second school right in opposition to the classical evolutionism came the historical particularism which was given by frank boas right frank boas basically criticized evolutionists because of variety of reasons right one thing that it cannot be a unilinear sequence every culture is unique right and we cannot say that the savages are less progressive the so called savage societies are primitive societies are less progressive than the civilized world his basic counter to that was that we will take this in detail after uh, you know when we come to the theories i am just giving you some glimpse of it right i am not teaching theories here i am telling you about the development of anthropology here systematic development how it started so here it is historical particularism next theory although the scholar the anthropologist who is associated with this school never says that i am giving a school a theory right this name him itself is coined by marvin harris marvin harris coined the term historical particularism and he associated it with frank boas and his ideas right and what this historical particularism say it says that every culture is unique every culture has its unique history and it is the product of its unique history and if you have to understand that culture then we have to understand all the cultural traits in a historical sense right this theory is part is very very interesting you will love it when it comes to you then there is another school after that next development in anthropology was the school of diffusionism like 
क्लासिकल इवोल्यूशनिज्म विच इवॉल्व इन थ्री प्लेसेस अमेरिका ब्रिटेन एंड कंटिनेंटल यूरोप दिस स्कूल ऑल्सो हैव द थ्री राइट अमेरिका ब्रिटेन एंड कॉन्टिनेंटल यूरोप एंड दिस स्कूल से इज दैट कल्चरल ट्रेड्स इवॉल्व एट सम प्लेसेस राइट ऑल देर आर वेरिएशन इन द फिव ऑफ ऑल द थ्री बट आई एम टेलिंग यू दैट दे इवॉल्व एट फिव प्लेसेस एंड स्प्रेड थ्रू आउट विद ट्रेवलर्स एंड माइग्रेशन और वॉर्स दैट इज डिफ्यूजनिज्म इवन फ्रॉम बोवास वॉज ऑल्सो एसोसिएटेड विद डिफ्यूजनिज्म ऑल्सो राइट ही इन्फ्लुएंस्ड अमेरिकन स्कूल ऑफ डिफ्यूजनिज्म दैट वी विल कम वन विल डिस्कस लेटर बिकॉज वी कैन नॉट डिस्कस द एंटायर थियोरी हियर we are discussing just the development of anthropology then after that there was another school which has which came in reaction to this diffusionism as well as evolutionism because they are too historical in their approach right and basically anthropology is the study of facts on the basis of observations so some people like malinowski they came and this malinowski says that we must study society here and now we cannot go back in time and study humans that they were doing that because we cannot go back and collect data we don't have time machine right so they focus on the study of here and now synchronic study okay i will discuss about the term synchronic later on just wait for some time okay so functionalism was the next school of thought associated with malinowski who sees culture as a united whole and we must study at here and now that every trait of culture has a function functionless traits will not survive so the cultural survivals which were explained by eb tyler that were rejected here right then there was another school structural functionalism there was another school after that associated with levi strauss that was structuralism that there exist a structure of society right and that structure according to levi strauss is the manifestation of unconscious mental thoughts right whatever you see outside is the product of unconscious mental thoughts which is patterned in binary binary means hot cold right all this you will not understand maybe this structuralism as of now but you must just write that structuralism is a new school of thought which studies the social structures right and that was associated with levi strauss we will study that in detail it will not cover uh, in 5 minutes we have to devote at least one day one lecture for understanding structuralism in detail right so after that school there was another school that was culture personality school or culture personality theory which says that culture influences personality and personality in turn influence culture there was three currents in the same school right which was associated with uh, the students of frank boas like ruth benedict margaret mead raf linton abraham cardiner Cora du Bois these are the five scholars associated with culture personality theory or culture personality school after that there was another school which tries to revise revive this classical evolutionism and that was what neo evolutionists did that classical evolutionists were a little imaginative because that was the first theory they don't have sufficient data or facts to prove their hypothesis right so what was done by neo evolutionists like julian stewart right leslie white they substantiated this with facts with field observation right so you can say from here on onwards from the historical particularism onwards the field studies started right and the field studies become 
द वेरी बेसिस वेरी फाउंडेशन ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजी आफ्टर दैट एंड हियर दीज पीपल नियो इवोल्यूशनिस्ट दे बेसिकली बेस्ड देयर इवोल्यूशनरी हाइपोथेसिस ऑन द फैक्ट दैट दे हैव ऑब्जर्व थ्रू देयर फील्ड स्टडीज आफ्टर दिस देर आर थ्री मोर स्कूल्स फोर मोर स्कूल्स वन वॉज सिंबॉलिक एंड इंटरप्रिटेटिव एंथ्रोपोलॉजी सिंबॉलिक एंड इंटरप्रिटेटिव एंथ्रोपोलॉजी वॉज एसोसिएटेड विद विक्टर टर्नर एंड क्लिफोर्ड गीट्स दीज टू स्कूल्स बेसिकली सीज दे दिस इज अ वन स्कूल एंड इन विच देर आर टू करंट राइट सो दे से दैट वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड कल्चर थ्रू द कल्चरल सिंबल्स अब सिंबल आपके हो सकते हैं घर के बाहर जो एक हम ब्लैक कलर का मटका लगाते हैं राइट right? uh, जिससे नजर ना लगे दैट थिंग और यू कैन सी दैट दिस रेड लाइट इज ए सिंबल राइट पीपल ट्री कैन बी ए सिंबल इट हैज ए सिंबॉलिक इंपॉर्टेंस राइट इन हिंदू कल्चर राइट टेम्पल हैज अ सिंबॉलिक इंपॉर्टेंस ओके ऑल दीज थिंग्स आर सिंबल्स एंड through the interpretation and the study of these symbols we can better understand any culture so that was the next stage in the development of anthropology uh, after that there was a school of uh, cognitive in opposition to this uh, symbolic anthropology structural anthropology there was another school which is called as cultural materialism cultural materialism that you will understand a little bit later because we did not cover symbolic and structuralism in much detail so it was in opposition to that basically when i told you that structuralism was talking about unconscious mental structures which are patterned in binary that is hot cold day light uh, day night right all these things symbolics were also talking about symbols mental things they are not talking about concrete things right material aspects which can be readily observed and collected here marvin harris gave the school materialism cultural materialism and it was in opposition to that in it was in opposition to structuralism and symbolic school right so that was the next theory and after that there was another development that was the cognitive anthropology cognitive anthropology try to understand the world view in much detail basically here the focus is on the native's perspective what the inhabitant of a culture of a land feels how he or she visualize his world how he or she make sense out of it right how they see various things how they see disease how they see rainfall how they see growth of the plants and trees right how they see the child birth everything so here the purpose of cognitive anthropology is to understand the culture from the inhabitants perspective from the natives perspective here our purpose is to remove all biases because if we see someone that they are doing some something right they are uh, performing a ritual then we may add our bias in explaining why we they are doing it right but here anthropology sees it why they do it what is their logic what is their reasoning so that is another level of development in anthropological theory and it enriched the discipline of anthropology then after this cognitive cognitivism there was the final theory last theory that we are living in today right that is post modernism this post modernism it is after modern so what is modern modern is the science the use of science that we are using everywhere from classical evolutionism onwards we are using science and scientific ideas we try to make anthropology more scientific closer to natural sciences but here post modernist says that science is hierarchical it considers itself superior 
that this is the only knowledge science says that we say is authentic it is uh, based on experimentation but what postmodernists say they reject this right they reject it they say that author is dead and text is freed and we readers can interpret the text the way we feel so that is the latest phase in the development of anthropology so you can say this is how anthropology evolved right now let me tell you about the development of anthropology right from the words of a very famous anthropologist right which you can quote to summarize everything into four major headings i believe you have understood it because i try to give a detail in its origin unsystematic beginning and then systematic beginning right and how it developed so i believe you have understood it you can watch it again to get more clarity because you will not understand it truly if i say it but not telling you in the very first class will also not be good you will understand everything but once you finish socio cultural part once you finish theories and methods then you will understand it clearly in much detail and in comprehensive manner right today i gave you just a glimpse so that when you listen to these words again and again you will find a meaning right at least your mind is your energy is channelized in that way that was my purpose of telling that right and that is why it was included in the very first class itself right that is why upsc syllabus start with meaning scope and development of anthropology so i today it was just an introduction of this development and you will understand the development in future classes you cannot understand development in one day because it was not developed in one day right it took years hundreds of years so how can you understand it one day in one day you cannot understand right but yes once you cover the syllabus then you can cover it in one day so what tk peniman have to say he wrote a book 100 years of anthropology in 1935 100 years of anthropology in 1935 and in this book tk men uh, tk peniman he divided the development of anthropology as a discipline into four phases and what were the four phases the first phase was formulatory phase the formulatory phase was before 1835 1835 he wrote the book in 1935 so before 1835 and before 1835 you can include everything that is we have discussed about herodotus aristotle hippocrates right you can include the voyages and colonialism enlightenment before the voyages enlightenment right so all these things you can club into this formulatory phase then the second phase was convergent phase convergent phase was from 1835 to 1859 1859 was the landmark time when the publication of origin of species was there by charles darwin so in convergent phase you can incorporate all the works of darwin that he studied on uh, the galapagos island right you know that he went on uh, on a, a voyage himself on galapagos island right uh, on west side of uh, peru in uh, pacific ocean then the works of the naturalist uh, wallace the works of malthus all these people can be and even herbert spencer can be seen here can be written here in this phase the third phase was 
कंस्ट्रक्टिव फेज द थर्ड फेज वॉज कंस्ट्रक्टिव फेज दैट वॉज फ्रॉम एटीन फिफ्टी नाइन टू नाइनटीन हंड्रेड राइट एटीन फिफ्टी नाइन टू नाइनटीन हंड्रेड नाउ इन दिस पीरियड राइट फ्रॉम द आइडियाज ऑफ डार्विन हर्बर्ट स्पेंसर द फर्स्ट स्कूल ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजिकल थियोरी दैट इज क्लासिकल इवोल्यूशनिज्म बोर्न राइट क्लासिकल इवोल्यूशनिज्म वॉज बोर्न इन दिस फेज राइट इन विच द कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन वॉज फ्रॉम ब्रिटिश एंथ्रोपोलॉजिस्ट ईवी टाइलर अमेरिकन एंथ्रोपोलॉजिस्ट एल एच मॉर्गन एंड जर्मन एंथ्रोपोलॉजिस्ट लाइक बस्टियान एंड बचोफन देर वर अदर स्कोलर्स ऑल्सो इन दिस कंस्ट्रक्टिव फेज राइट बट यू जस्ट राइट दीज थ्री फोर नेम्स देन आफ्टर दैट ही गेव द फोर्थ फेज दैट वॉज द क्रिटिकल फेज राइट दैट वॉज फ्रॉम नाइनटीन हंड्रेड टू नाइनटीन थर्टी फाइव okay in this he included first the historical particularism then diffusionism then he incorporated functionalism structuralism and all these things right so but there is one problem with this uh uh T.K. Penniman's uh, description of the development of anthropology that he his work do not cover after 1935, right? This work does not cover. So suppose if there is a question, why I gave you this? That you know already I have told you from though two two perspectives, unsystematic and systematic. So. that covers systematic beginning we we have covered until now till now but this book this work of tk penniman it is limited up to 1935 so if you are asked the development of anthropology how tk penniman have you know talk about it then you can write this one right or if you want to summarize it you can write until this and then you can use your information after that when we have discussed in the earlier way right it is your choice but my suggestion is to go by that right unsystematic and systematic because in that you have more liberty here you are restricted until here and after that you have to make another statement to explain it further right so this is uh, the uh, this is all about the origin and development of anthropology now i have told you that i will take some more questions that uh, the first and foremost question is that there is a statement by r r merritt which says that r r merritt was also a british uh, evolutionist classical evolutionist he was a student of e b tyler so what e b tyler uh, r r merritt says that you can understand from this uh, development of anthropology itself right there are three major statements that you need to justify you may find a question on it so let me take all those three statements so there are some views of anthropologists on anthropology and its development the first view was r r merritt r r merritt so what r r merritt says R.R. Merritt was a student of E.B. Tyler, and uh, he was a classical evolutionist of the time. He says that uh, he talks about the origin of religion. He says that animatism, that you will understand later, animatism, uh, it's a religion, right? It's a form of religion. Is the earliest form of religion, and from this uh, animism, animatism, other forms of religion evolved. so what he has to say about the development of anthropology he says that anthropology is the child of darwinism anthropology is a child 
of Darwinism. That anthropology, according to him, he says that it is because of the Darwin's ideas, right? Darwinism means because of the Darwin's ideas, what he says. So are you convinced with this statement or not? That is my question here. You have to think over this, that whether anthropology is a child of Darwinism or not. You have to reason both ways. I told you about the development of anthropology. I told you that anthropology is as old as the humanity itself. Right. Undoubtedly, the systematic beginning of anthropology started with Darwinism. Right. But there was anthropology also before that. That was not formalized. That was not systematized. But there was anthropology. There was anthropological oriented studies. But the formal studies were no doubt, you know, given a push by Darwin or his ideas. Right. So that is what you have to discuss. Right. So in that you can justify both of the things. Right. How you can say that it is a child of Darwinism and what justifies that that it was not a child of Darwinism. Rather a significant push was given by the ideas of Darwin which is responsible for the systematic or the formal beginning of anthropology. That is my uh, uh, arguments on this. The second is anthropology is a child of imperialism. Anthropology is a child of imperialism. This statement was given by Kathleen Gogg. Kathleen Gogg was a female anthropologist who studied even in India, right, Nayar society, matrilineal society of South India, right, Nayar and the marriage system and the family system of Nayar was studied by Kathleen Gogg. So Kathleen Gogg says that anthropology is the child of imperialism, imperialism or you can say colonialism, right. Why? Because when the colonial powers were colonizing the other parts of the world, they faced a lot of problems while they started administering them. They have to learn a lot about their bizarre customs, their traditions, their way of life and unless they know about their way of life, their customs, they cannot rule them happily. Because there will be troubles, there will be problems. Right. So this statement also justifies to an extent, but not largely. Yes, systematic beginning was the product of Darwinism as well as it was the product of imperialism also because Darwin himself learned from the imperialism, right? Darwin's ideas were to an extent derived from the colonial experiences, right? Imperialism also. So Darwin himself was influenced by imperialism. So to an extent you can say that yes, imperialism no doubt led to systematic beginning of anthropology but anthropology was even there before that, right, from the times of Herodotus. And if you go, want to go back there, then anthropology is as old as humanity itself. This statement you can quote again and again wherever you require, right. Then after that, there is another uh, statement by Levi Strauss which says that anthropology is a child of revolt and rebellion. Anthropology is a child of revolt and rebellion. This statement was given by Levi Strauss, the father of structuralism. So, this is again associated with imperialism, right? The more imperial powers or colonial powers they faced with the revolts and rebellions, they have to think more, they have to study more about the societal customs and their traditions. And naturally, it have, 
enriched the discipline of anthropology it helped in systematization of anthropology but it was not it it is not just to say that it was child of just revolt and rebellion because the study of anthropology was there even before that right so these three questions i would say that you must apply your mind on these three statement by some uh, holm uh, some uh, stalwarts of anthropology right so this is about the origin and uh, development of anthropology now i want to take another question that what makes anthropology a unique discipline i want to talk about this question what makes anthropology a unique discipline or you can say what is unique about anthropology why we are studying it because humans ko to sociology bhi pad raha hai right sociology bhi humans ko study karti hai psychology bhi study karti hai economics bhi study karti hai political science bhi study karti hai what is unique about this discipline right we know that uh, the subject matter of humans is shared by many disciplines and we humans are so complex that we cannot be studied by a single discipline a single methodology a single way so an anthropology is an amalgamation of everything right and that is why basically uh, research in anthropology is holistic but it is very complex and it is difficult too because when you want to bring that holism into it then it is very difficult so what is unique about anthropology what is unique about anthropology let's take this question i have uh, you know set the context that although there are other disciplines also they also studies various aspects of human kind then why anthropology what is the need of anthropology and what what are the unique things about anthropology so the first thing you know you can see that the uniqueness of anthropology can be studied from its perspective its various perspectives the various perspectives that anthropology have make it unique and what are those perspectives the first perspective is holism what is holism we have already discussed or you can say it's holistic nature or its holistic perspective anthropology is a holistic discipline that means it studies all aspects of mankind right just try to recall what clyde glaucon has to say that anthropology is a mirror for man right it looks at man as a whole every aspect whether it is social economic political ecological historical religious everything is covered that is the unique thing because although yes just now i told you that sociology studies men humans but it studies the social aspect it leaves out on biological aspect right history also studies but history is a chronological study of past we studies past present as well as future in anthropology political science study the political aspect the law the nature of law right but we studies law in social context and we do not deny on biological aspect on religious aspect while studying the law right because many laws and legal principles they are derived from religious customs right aap bahut jagah dekhte bhi hoge apne bahut sare bizarre videos bhi dekhe honge Uh, about the tribal punishments tribal laws right the licking of uh, uh, the hot ax or putting hand in the hot boiling oil to remove some coins right these are some uh, kind of uh, law enforcement practices so holism that it studies every aspect 
all aspects and those aspects in an integrated and embedded manner. One aspect is not seen in isolation from the other. It studies the social aspect, it studies the economic aspect, it studies the political, it studies the ecological aspect, it studies the religious aspect, right? All these aspects in totality, in holistic manner, integrated to each other, not isolated from one another. Right? So that is the unique thing of anthropology. Second thing, what is unique about anthropology is that anthropology believe in cultural relativism. Cultural relativism also making it unique. Basically, anthropology sees every culture as unique. It does not see that one culture is superior or one culture is inferior. Basically, all cultures are unique in themselves. And anthropology do not discriminate on any of the bizarre practice that the anthropologists observe. They see it objectively from the way it is seen by its inhabitants. So, the cultural relativism gives a sense of objectivity. A sense of objectivity, right? When we observe, when we document any culture, we don't see one culture as inferior or superior. Now you may be thinking that some cultures have some practices which violate human rights. Some cultures practice hunt, head hunting, like some Naga tribes used to do that, head hunting. And that had them mount on outside their house, on their spears. So, how do you see that practice? If you see that every culture and every cultural practice is unique and equally valid, so will you validate those practices? Right? Will you validate the breast burning in some African communities of young girls to suppress their sexuality or mutilation of uh, genital, uh, female genitals by Wahara community? How do you see it? So that is a debate here that we will take later on. Right? whether those things are acceptable or not and basically anthropology also reject that right because we should not confuse that objective understanding with promotion of those activities right which are violative of human rights so we'll come to that later on when we are going to study cultural relativism and ethnocentrism separately we will take maybe in the next class that discussion okay <clears throat> next thing what is unique about anthropology that it studies cultures in a comparative manner, right? It compare one culture, one society to other societies in order to give generalizations. So, one society and one culture is compared with the other and the other in order to give generalizations. Then, this comparative study is based on the field study of participant observation. Anthropology studies everything from participant observation. Let me tell you uniqueness of anthropology, how anthropology is unique. See, anthropologists do not give theories just by some imagination. Rather, they go into the field. They stay with the inhabitants for five, six years and they learn their language, they learn their customs, they participate, uh, participate in their daily activities and then they learn about them and they document them. So this is the field work and participant observation make anthropology a unique discipline. Then other thing is anthropology studies the synchronic and diachronic manner. Fifth thing is anthropology studies, it studies synchronic and diachronic. Let me elaborate what is synchronic. Chron is the of time, right? Synchronic means at the same time, here and now. And diachronic is the study of past, right, in a historical manner. 
सो इट स्टडीज सोसाइटीज एंड कल्चर्स इन सिंक्रोनिक एंड डायक्रोनिक वे देन इट स्टडीज द सिक्स मेजर एस्पेक्ट ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजी इज दैट इट स्टडीज इन द इट स्टडीज द एटिक वे एंड एमिक वे these two terms are derived from phonetic and phonemic from uh, linguistics right attic means objective study from outsiders perspective and emic is the perspective of inhabitants natives what natives thinks is emic and what we think about the culture on the basis of some scientific observations is attic so attic is the insiders perspective attic is the outsiders perspective so anthropology covers both outsiders perspective as well as insiders or natives perspective so that makes anthropology a unique discipline right so all these features along with the historical study right anthropology is a historical study right it's a objective study which is based on evidences this make anthropology a unique discipline right so that thing you can <clears throat> study that this is a unique discipline right unlike other disciplines so i hope i did justice with that right what is unique about anthropology now there was another question that i have told you that i will discuss whether anthropology is a natural or social science let us take that question whether anthropology is a natural or social science although that question you may not understand in the very first class the reason being you have to have a deeper understanding of the various views on anthropology that question i will be discussing here but the topic that we have covered this can be understood by the person who have already studied anthropology right or who have studied basics of anthropology completely right so whether anthropology is a natural is a natural or social science this is a question for us now you know that social science is like behavioral science sociology political science and natural science like biology physics right so is the is, is anthropology study of only biology or it studies social science so we say that it is the combination of the two right it studies the social aspect and it studies the biological aspect so it is the combination of the two right so naturally you can say that when we study only biological aspect then it comes closer to the natural sciences and when we study only social sciences then it comes closer to the social sciences that is a very beautiful explanation that you can give but let us take uh, you know if the question is that on whether social anthropology is a natural science or social science in that also there can be debate right so what debate can we have is that you know normally right if you talk about anthropology as a whole so you say that when we are studying the biological aspect so it is closer to natural sciences and when it is uh, studying the social aspect or society and culture then it is closer to the social sciences right now there are some perspectives there are some views that can be very useful for you to understand whether it is a natural science or it is a social science right so let me give you one context right when you are studying in a particular context in a particular culture 
then anthropology is a closure to social sciences when you are studying in a context in a cultural context right on the other hand when you are talking about that anthropology is a universal science which is applicable on all cultures on all societies which is applicable on all cultures and all societies here you are saying that it is applicable on a particular culture you are talking in a context so when you are talking about a universality of this then you say that it is closer to sciences natural sciences because gravity har jagah pe hai apple upar se niche girega har jagah pe right ye pen upar se niche gir raha hai ye har jagah pe hoga right so that is universal phenomena so if you say that something is universal right that that is found in all cultures that is marriage is found in all cultures family is found in all cultures so that you can say it bring it closer to natural science next what makes anthropology closer to natural science is the practice of participant observation right because anthropology whatever anthropology do it do through participant observation right participant observation anthropologists go into the field live in the society learn their language and their customs and participate in their activities and then they collect data and facts those facts and data are very authentic and objective this authenticity and objectivity in their data collection and in theorization brings brings it closer to the natural sciences right because in natural sciences like physics chemistry and biology we also do the same right that makes it closer to natural sciences then use of secondary data right like census data nsso data which is collected by others that brings it closer to social sciences but part, participant observation brings it closer to natural sciences because it is observed in a scientific way then let's be uh, that what scholars say about the nature of the discipline anthropology is discipline right so some scholars like radcliffe brown and his students radcliffe brown and his students they say that anthropology is universal in scope and it is not dealing with specific cultures it is not dealing with specific cultures rather it is universal in scope that is why it is closer to natural sciences it is closer to natural sciences on the other hand there are few scholars like alfred kroeber right and his students they basically say that anthropology is historical anthropology is historical and culture specific and culture specific that is why it is closer to or it is a social science that is why it is a social science right crober bidney even spichard all these argues that it is closer to social sciences malinowski who was a physicist himself right father of functionalism as well as he was the first person who you know truly gave us participant observation he stayed with trobian islanders for approximately 4 to 5 years and he gave the theory of functionalism from there malinowski says that anthropology stands between the natural and the social sciences 
anthropology stands between and natural sciences and social sciences here is anthropology according to him right it stands between the two right then there is another scholar uh, who says that robert redfield robert redfield says that holistic tendencies are on rise that holistic tendencies are on rise in anthropology right you can use this in conclusion or let me give you who says this this is robert redfield you will study robert redfield in civilization school later on and there is another statement very famous statement by crober that it is the most humanistic of all sciences anthropology is most humanistic of all social sciences and most scientific of all sciences right so with this we end this discussion of today we will meet very soon on a interactive webinar where i will be addressing all your queries the date and timing of the webinar will be uh, told to you all right through all medias please stay connected and if you have any query you can connect with us we will be very very happy to solve it so with this we end today's session i hope you will like it thank you take care stay safe all the very best